it is very, very baffling to see Christians who are free to go to their hometown, to go to their villages, to go to their family house because they are afraid of witches and wizards. Some maybe have received prophecies or they are afraid to mingle with some persons in their families because they feel they are after their, after their lives. But the same people, many of them, voluntarily go and kneel before witch doctors who lay hands on them and pray for them. They will give them anything they are led to give to them, like anointing oil, water, give them anything and they drink without asking any question. This is very, very sad and baffling. In case you are new here, I am Hosanna Devi, and this is Ego Ayubna, by the special grace of God. We speak the truth and open your eyes to the truth. Nothing but the truth we speak here. Let me explain what I just said. It is not every signboard that we see on the street. It is not everybody that comes on the cable television or on the internet, or it's not every building we see where they call the name of Jesus Christ that Jesus actually resides or that is of God. In those days, in the 60s, in the 40s, in the 80s, in the 70s, there were witch doctors who were practicing in many, many places, especially in Africa here, before Christianity actually swept all those things away. And it was very, very obvious when you see a witch doctor, when you see a, a herbalist, as some do call them, uh, it, it was very, very obvious. But Christianity has come to bring a change. A lot of them have changed. But we have some sheep among us people who wear sheep clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. They are not actually sheep, they are wolves in sheep clothing. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. I have seen, personally, I am speaking out of experience. I've seen a lot of people who claim to be men of God, but in practice and in the spirit, they are witch doctors. They are never men of God. God does not know them and they have nothing to do with God. What they are practicing has nothing to do with the Bible, but they claim that they are of God. Some of them are out there sleeping with people's wives, baiting women, extorting money from people. and. Even what they practice has nothing to do with the Bible. But we see Christians who say they are afraid of their enemies, they are afraid of witches and wizards, they are afraid of diabolical people, and they, they, they run away from these diabolical people and go to even the worst words. If, in fact, the worst how could somebody that is afraid of a witch go to the head of a coven, a witchcraft coven, and don't lay hands on them? What I am saying is this, before you go to any man of God, thank God for the spirit of discernment. Pray, ask, you, ask yourself, how do I see this person? Do a little bit of uh, research, and not just research, prayers first. Pray. God, who is this person? Look at the, what I mean by research is, what are the fruits this person bear? The Bible says, by their fruits, you shall know them. Not just by what they say. Go beyond the pulpit. This person claims the pulpit, he proclaims to be of God. But what kind of life does he live? What is his lifestyle? By their fruits. Means that what the people do, what is your character? What is your behavior? What is your lifestyle? What are they behind the pulpit? That is what the Bible means by that. Means by 
by their fruits you shall know them. We should, by the spirit of discernment, test every spirit whether they are of God. We have seen Christians, and you may have seen Christians, who don't have any problem with the lifestyle of someone who calls himself a man of God. All they are after is, we want results. We want results. What has uh, holy pastors, what have they been able to, what solution have they been able to prefer? What have they been able to offer? And that is the question. It's not about men of God. It is about Jesus Christ. If you live your life well, if you obey the truth, if you are a child of the kingdom and you follow Jesus Christ, why not? God will definitely save you. The Bible says that he will give his angels charge over you to prepare you with your hands, lest you strike your feet against a stone. The Lord builds a wall around those who fear him. And that is what uh, Satan told God about Job. That, oh, you talking about Job, is it not that you build a, a hedge around him? You know, God built hedges around his children, a wall of protection. Even the psalmist says that the angel of the Lord encampeth around those who fear him. If you fear God, you don't need to run up and down. I am not saying you shouldn't meet men of God for prayer. We are brethren, we are soldiers in Christ, and no soldier can stand alone. We have to help one another to stand. But I am saying, before you meet anybody for prayer, pray, ask questions. Who is this? Ask God. God, who is this? Is this person representing you? Because I want to meet this person in your name. But a lot of Christians are not doing this. You can be running away from small, small witches and wizards and manje and uh, diabolical people, mammoth people with mammoth powers. You can be running away from them and you are meeting the head of the coven. I want to tell you categorically today that many of what you call churches are not churches. They are a disgrace to the kingdom and their judgment, their condemnation is ready waiting for them. There are just some of them, there are some of them God is just saying, oh, you finish your deception and come and meet me here. Just finish. Your reward is waiting for you here. We shouldn't fall prey. We shouldn't be deceived by the antics of the wicked ones. Remember, Matthew chapter 24, verse 24 says, There shall arise false prophets and teachers, and they shall perform great signs and wonders. The Bible says, they shall perform great signs and wonders. That means, the Bible, God doesn't actually uh, deny the fact that they have some level of power. I know they also uh, use deception too, deceive people and arrange miracles too. But the Bible does not deny the fact that they have some powers. They shall perform signs and wonders and shall deceive many. Don't be among the many Satan is deceiving today. If you love God and you keep his commandment, if you ask him for anything, including protection from your enemies, he will definitely give it to you. Now, if you have watched this video, I want you to forward this video to someone. It's going to set somebody free. It is a truth that can set free. I believe in the truth. There is power in the truth. I heard the truth some time ago, and today I'm a free man by the grace of God. Forward this video to someone. You can visit our website, eagleayopuna.com and biblicalsexualpurity.com. Once again, I want to tell you, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to drop your comment in the comment section. And also, if you, uh, if you have not given your life to Christ, feel very free to contact us. Our team will lead you to Christ.